Greetings and welcome everyone to our first episode of Attic Finds. Today I got a huge package from one of my friends who told me there's a lot of retro stuff in there. He found it on the attic and judging from its shape it's been there since at least 25 years. The zip code on it are, is still 4 digits so it's pre-1993 since this package is actually rotting somewhere on some attic. Actually there is a clue about what could be inside because he handed me one thing separately that he found beside it and that actually is a 1541 floppy disk from Commodore. The very first old floppy disk for the Commodore 64 and Commodore 16 if I remember correctly. It's still in quite good shape and it's heavy, at, heavy as hell here. But judging from its actually uh, appearance it should work. Alright, let's have a look inside. And judging by the smell, oh my god, it's been in the attic quite a while. Alright, what do we have here? Seems like some cone or something to put something on it. I don't know, maybe. Uh, maybe it was for some, some walking stick to put it on side and I could walk with it. Must be some old guy who had that. Anyhow, let's see what's in there. Some 5 inch floppy disks. Well, that's a good clue what uh, we can expect from that box. And uh, some more stuff are not important. What is that? Ah, just note blocks. Old school note blocks. And we have games for the Commodore 64. A whole book of, oh, I don't know, games and code and whatever. You could write that in your Commodore 64 and have a game typed of it. And there we go. The what is that? Dividing for Commodore 64 some stuff. Alright, what do we have here? Some secret stuff. No, it's a photocopy, an old school photocopy of Hansa. Which was a great game actually for the Amiga I played. But it seems it was also out for Commodore 64. So yeah, copied manuals, that was our time. Oh, and we got stickers. Those were stickers you could put on the floppy disks to label them and also to remove copyright protection. Copyright? And <laughs> I did say copyright, no, copy protection. Ah, I'm in YouTube. I'm talking about copyright here. Okay, what is that? It's more junk and another disk. Oh my god. No, that's a joystick. I never seen one of like this. This is loose, I guess. Uh, okay, it's a bit cranky and oh my, I don't know. All oh, right, you can actually use that for replacement, so you can have many different joysticks on one. Mm, I wonder if it's still working out, but I guess we will find out in the next video. Today is just unpacking time. Okay, let's have a look what's in there. A huge drawer. Maybe manuals. Oh my god. Okay, that's about the monetization. Oh, that's a greeting. Hello, guys. So this seems like a huge manual about something. Alright, now that's interesting. It is a registration card for software, the world of coding languages.
I put that there. So it seems that this whole drawer was filled with learning material about computer languages. Hmm, more stuff like that. So that guy seriously wanted to learn some coding and uh, C64 basic actually, that's what was available. Or a sampler. Oh my god, look at all of that photocopied old paper. What do we have here? Oh, those are seminar prices and postcode modulation. Also something to learn for ISDN and stuff like that. Seems that guy was in the post office or like the German telecom. Usual technicians uh, learned about that. The world of electronics. Oh my god, <laughs> this I will cover that stuff in a later episode. All right, some more discs. Turkin and Zekma Kraken. Okay, it's hard to get that out, so... Nippon Software, the ultimate roleplay game for the Commodore 62. It's just missing the software. All right, like another manual. So there's something I want to get out of there, but... Let's have a look at that first. Commodore 64, the official book you got with your Commodore 64. It's explaining everything about this computer and teaching even how you code Simple programs for that, so that's a manual you got back in the days with your PC, or like the Commodore 64. Good old times, I keep that. Okay, now this is very hard to get out, there's something stuck in there. Ah, there we go, oh no, look at that. Now that's not how you read discs. I doubt they will be recoverable, so yeah, it's sad, it's very sad. And what's that? That's another one. Oh, that's, that's some screwed bits, I guess. So, casualties. Some more floppy disks, it's like McCracken disk 2. And that's something unknown. But it feels like that's one of the sleeves that are unbreakable. I had, oh no, it's okay, don't worry, it breaks easily. Ah, oh, Quellasoft software collection. Now that's a rare one. What do we have here? Dell Thompson Deck Descation, Hunchback 2, Koenig Strikes Back, High Noon, Johnny the Jinkies. I've never, never, never seen any of those. And that's missing the disc. All right, maybe I find it in one of. The boxes that are hopefully in there. Okay, now let's see if I can get that out. Nope, just another disc. Somewhere stuck in here. Ah, there we go. Now let's have a look at that. It's a Commodore 64, so the early one version. Oh, they called it the bread box back in the day because it really looked like a bread box and oh, that feel of the key is awesome. I've seen it in better shapes, but it's not bad actually, the keys feel well. As something is written on it, some code lines about uh, going somewhere, so he definitely learned about coding. Let's have a look at the back side here. It looks fine so far. No corrated uh, contacts. And yeah, it's the original first version of the Commodore 64. Still enabled and with my lucky number on it. Awesome. All right, now that's a good find. Ok, 
Okay, but there's something more. Let's have a look here. There's a second one inside. I have no idea why people needed two of them, but this one even has a protective cover. And oh my god, I never seen that actually, and still unbroken. Oh, I need to clean that up and have a look at that later on. And this is the second one. It is not in that good shape, sadly. The keys are. No, the keys are much more softer. So he used that a lot, and if I see that correctly, there is some hot damage down there. It must be something hot slided below it, so that's very sad. Okay, the contacts look great. Inside, a little glare, alright. I think I need to open that one up. But yes, there's another Commodore 64. Not in the best shape, though, so there's a lot of things I need to repair. Oh my god, those keys. You, you can actually hear it. Thinking of it, since those Commodore 64s are numbered differently, I think there must be at least 32 of them in a large room concerning this uh, coding manual that people learned about. So I suppose there were made for education purposes and was used in a large school. So yeah, that's that's the thing. Coding on a Commodore 64. Okay, we have a bit more here. So maybe new? Oh yes, they are new. Floppy trial. No floppy disk. Wow, it's seldom to see them as new. I bet they are still empty. Very nice. I'll keep that. Alright, we have another joystick here. That's a quite common one. It's a quick joy. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it feels not that great though. It's certainly seen better days. So I suppose those machines came from an educational purpose down to a private sector and they got been, have been used as gaming machines. Ah, oh, and here we have the wonderful old school mouse from the Commodore 64. It's a Commodore 1351 and it seems the ball is in good shape too. So I suppose it's still working quite fine. Okay, we got another joystick. Oh boy. It's an unknown brand for me. But uh, the switches feel fine. Great. Okay, some cables. This is for the RF antenna. I will need this to connect the Commodore 64 to my TV. So let's get to good care of it because I'm actually out of that cables. I hope it still works. And another flexi disc. Oh no, there's no discs inside. What is that? Maybe some secret codes. Notices. Hmm, maybe love letters. No, it's a uh, skyscraper. Skyscraper way? Hmm, that's an interesting code. Okay, what, what is in there? Some photocopy of uh, some magazine maybe okay some levels oh Maniac Manson this is a photocopy from one of the many Commodore 64 magazines solving games and it seems that's exactly the same copy again 
Oh, and here we have uh, a lot of stickers. And those are not just stickers for labeling. No, those stickers were used for actually protecting uh, the disc for being written on. So you have that small little uh, thingy there on the side. And as long as it's open, the drive refuses to write on the disc. So if you stick one of those, well, they don't stick anymore. They're, oh my god, maybe 25 years old or later. Let's see if we can find one. That seems to work fine. And if you wanted to write on a floppy disk again, you glued that over. And there you go. You were able to write on it again. Well, it doesn't really stick. All right. So we got a bunch of those. Let's get them up. Oh boy, more of them. Wow. Hmm. Okay, just plain old paper. <laughs> wow. Phew, that smells good. I like the smell. Okay, some more of those uh, stickers for copy protection. And some labels. More labels. Oh, that's quite useful. Oh my god. That stuff is everywhere now. Ugh. Okay, maybe I throw it away. <laughs> Okay, on to the next one. We have a Final Cartridge 3. This was one of the modules I used also in my childhood. It was a game freezer and cheat code cartridge with a great user interface. And it was strictly stuck in the back side of the Commodore 64 and uh, it included a lot of stuff. A graphical user interface and a floppy drive speed enhancer and all that stuff so that's an awesome find i love that module it's so handy okie dokie now finally we get to the floppy risks okay oh my god there is a lot of stuff in there i <laughs> most likely will need to back up pretty soon if not, it's already gone by bit rotting. And it's a lot of games actually. Take my Kraken, Bulldog Red, Bulldog Crash Turrican, Data Mod, some software for calculation. All right. And we have another one. Oh boy, it's so dusty. Okay, there's not much in here, so I can shuffle those discs around later on. Yeah, it's still some CAD software. Nothing really important. Most of them are unlabeled. And here we have the original power supply for Commodore 64. Quite a unique thing. It was one of those that didn't have a filling. So if you open up, you actually can see the insides. But it also seems that one had some accident with some hot stuff. Hmm, I wonder what happened there. I hope it still works actually. Or two more. Oh, the good old cables. They still use that nowadays. This is not coming out of age, that connector. So I guess it's for the floppy drive. And yes, there's the floppy drive connection cable. Awesome. And another disk case. I'm running out of place here, or space. 
Oh, we keep that. I know there is a lot of stuff in there. Oh, we have another... Uh, whatever that is for a joystick. I wonder who needs that many joystick handles. Let me get that down. So that's uh, a lot of... what is that? Uh, so seems they screwed something on the table, uh, okay. And some really old pencils, uh, Faber Castell, Japanese pen, uh, most likely dry. Another one, a red ball pen. And it still writes, oh my god, I keep that, that's a nice. Oh, and it's, it's uh, FTP. No, that's political stuff. That goes away. And uh, cable internet or cable connection. All right. All right. So, no name. Another disk. <laughs> All right. And notes. Okay, so someone noted about loading stuff how to get stuff done on the memory. And we have an address and telephone number, maybe the one that uh, used this computer. So uh, yes, that's, that's, that's the keeper, just for documentation purposes. Where to get that from? Okay, some more notes in German, no one can read anyway. Text notes, computer notes, all right. And we have a gold star, color, portable fencer, mid cavity. Okay, the TV. I bet that TV was used to connect the C64 on it. Ah, oh, nice old school one. And registration cards for the TV and some officials that tell the TV is safe to use. Or still uh, West German stuff. Oh, look at that. That one was used in the floppy drive when it actually was delivered was inside and you pulled that out so that guy actually saved that this is a great find we can seldom come across those oh yeah that's a keeper all right and some manual stuff for tv oh a calculator mbo calculator good old stuff <laughs> okay and more notes and seems those are more notes about, uh, oh my god, coding and all that stuff. Yeah, manuals. A lot of manuals copied. Datamat. Ah, oh, that's a Datamat manual. Oh, it was a software for Commodore 64. And what else is in there? A joystick. Another one. It's... No, not, not that good. I don't know. I don't like joysticks with no clicking sounds. Well, okay. And, oh my god, I think almost every one of us had that joystick. A quick joy. Uh, he really was... He, he just got the stuff done. It was one very common joystick. And same goes for that one. Oh, I like that. You actually can hear when you do something. Another one. Okay, that's a cool picture. And what we have here? Okay, that that is a quite interesting thing. It looks like a stapler, and it's where well, some way is, but it was used for a completely different purpose. So you took one of those floppy drives, a floppy floppy disk. <laughs> And what you did, you slided it in there. Ugh. Come on, all right. And then you press down firmly. All right, and so you had another copy protection label thingy in there. So you could actually mark your disk as copy protected with that very destructive method. Okay, some more. This, I suppose. Yes, but those are, seem not to be new. 
Mike 37. All right. Well, some games and stuff. So that's something I need to investigate later on. What's on there? If it's still readable, I guess. And more discs. Oh wow, this is a large collection here. Oh, look at that. A lot of database stuff coding stuff. And the Commodore 64. 60, 64er. <laughs> 64 in the 60er, as we say in German, was from magazine. Okay, that goes down there. Okay, another unknown disk. And uh, all right, not so important. Oh boy, oh look at that, this is the floppy disk manual, floppy disk drive manual actually, yeah, you, you got a huge manual just for your disk drive back then, and it's about 60 pages long, so yeah, this was the time, you got a manual for your disk drive, and some strange notes, I have no idea, hmm. Loose floppy disks. Supreme. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it basically. Just one more small piece of paper. Kellogg's a computer lexicon, the small computer lexicon featured by Commodore. Oh wow, I never seen that one. Actually covers basic terms of computer stuff and explaining what computers are about, what does hardware mean, what does digital mean. All right, uh, great systems capable of one billion operations per second. All right, <laughs> oh boy, that, that was the time where people uh, learned about computers in Kellogg's uh, cornflakes. Awesome. All right, now that's it for Attic Find. We had a lot of discs on there, which I hope I can recover one day, pretty soon actually. Six joysticks, one mouse, and I really like that joystick. It said, I don't know, it's replaceable stuff on it. I've never seen that kind of joystick. And yes, I will keep in touch with you about what's on that disc. But first of all, we need to find out if those Commodore 64s are still running, actually. Oh, there's still something written on it. Yeah, it was definitely used for coding purposes. Uh, most likely for educational purposes. For teaching classes about coding with the Commodore 64 back in the days. And I think at least 32 of them was in such a classroom lined up. Oh, that's what I I would love to see that. But all right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little attic find. And the next episode, I will actually try to power them up and see if we can get the picture. Till then, I hope to see you soon.